you'll notice that we are skipping Lesson 102 on using report templates and moving right on to Lesson 103, Designing Letterheads. In this lesson, there is some very important information on page 423, 103H. This simple list will be very helpful to you way beyond this course if you start practicing using them to evaluate all of the forms or desktop publishing types of publications that you come across you will be well on the way to being able to apply them yourself they are important enough for me to read them to you keep all elements of your design simple and balanced you will also have an opportunity to be a little more creative with your publications as the course goes on, especially in the last session. You should next limit the number of fonts, attributes, bold, italics, and so on, and sizes. Using no more than two fonts is a good rule of thumb. That is a very important one that is agreed on by many people for all kinds of document design. Use white space liberally to separate and open up text and graphics. This is also a good one. You don't want your document to get too busy. Use different alignments, left, center, right, and full to add interest and emphasis and to improve readability. That is always a key element to consider is readability. Experiment and change. Word makes both easy to do. Now if you go back then and do the word processing lesson 103i, you will cover several things in this lesson using small caps and text boxes. It is essential for the letterhead and other projects to use text boxes to draw them and know how to format them. So this lesson is very important. It is suggested that you use Zoom to work in your text box to review that in Word, refer back to page 34 in your Word manual. You will also be learning about using small caps. I will demonstrate how to do this in our document that we're going to be doing, Form 1036, but you should also note, as suggested in your Word manual, that there is a keyboard shortcut for this, Control-Shift-K. Okay, after you have completed the Word Manual lesson, you'll be ready to begin our Form 1036, the Letterhead Form. Click Start Work. Our first step is going to be to change our top left and right margins to 3 tenths of an inch. So go to the Page Layout ribbon, select Margins, and Custom. Here we're going to change top to, all you have to do is type 0.3 left, 0.3, and right, 0.3. You can leave the bottom margin set to 1 inch. Click OK, and you will notice on the ruler that your margins have changed as indicated. Next, we're going to insert a text box at the top of the page that is 1.4 inches high and 7.8 inches wide. The best way to do this is to go to the Insert ribbon, click Text Box, and move down to the command to draw a text box. Now you can put your cursor here and draw a general shape, but then we're going to move to the Drawing Tools Format ribbon and change our dimensions exactly up here in the Size box. For Height, Remember, it's going to be 1.4 inches high, and for width, 7.8. Okay, and there it is, perfectly drawn for you. The next step is to center it horizontally and positioned relative to the top margin. You will notice when you look at the checklist that there is an illustration on the right that reminds you of the Word Manual lesson and how to do this. Select your text box. It's often difficult to know whether you're selecting the whole text box or just the text inside of it. You have to either click twice or make sure that you have the double cursor pointer when you are on the edge of the document. We are then going to move to the Drawing Tools Format ribbon 
and under the Arrange Group, click the Align button, which is not labeled in my case. It may be in yours depending on how widely you have displayed your page. Click the Options to verify that Align to Margin is checked, and then we're going to click the Desired Horizontal Alignment. In this case, we want Align Center, it may not have changed much, but this shows that it's perfectly aligned horizontally relative to the margins. Next, click inside the text box and change the text alignment to right. You can go back to the home ribbon and click the button in the paragraph group Align Text Right. Notice that the paragraph mark with Show Hide On should be moved then to the right. When you type Rockwall Real Estate, you should capitalize as you type just the first letter in each word, like this. Press Enter, and then we're going to go back and apply the other formatting in the steps. First we want Calibri 24 point, select 24, it needs to be bold, and we need to set small caps, so move to the font dialog box click small caps and the preview should show that everything is in capitalized but we have a larger beginning letter for each word. Okay, below that we're going to type the address in Calibri 11 point And after the address, we're going to type the URL on the line below in italic. First of all, I need to be sure that I've changed this to 11, and I had not. So we're reducing that to font size 11, and then we're going to add italics to the line where we type the URL as www.rockwallhomes.com. Now we can click outside the text box where we're going to insert clip art related to real estate. Move to the insert ribbon, click clip art, and do a search for real estate. You can choose a graphic of your choice. I'm going to scan a few here to make my selection. Okay, notice how large this is. We're going to reduce the size. I am going to change the wrap style we want on top of the text, so move to wrap text in front of, same as on top of, then you can move it freely on the page. I'm going to move it here into the corner, and then I'm also going to apply a style. Now we will later be applying rounded corners to the text box itself, so we're going to move to something similar here for the graphic. I think I'll even choose a 3D graphic here. Okay, all you have to do with the clip art is be sure that it is sized appropriately and that you have set the wrap style so that it is on top of or in front of the text box. Okay, I have already changed the clip art shape to rounded rectangles. Next, I need to change the text box shape. So double click to be sure that you have the entire text box selected. Then you need to move in the Insert Shapes group to the Edit Shape box, select Change Shape, and then Rounded Rectangle. Next, we are going to start changing color of font to complement the colors in the clip art, and change the text box border and shading to complement the colors in the clip art. This is where you can use some of your own creativity, perhaps even in selecting your clip art, to approximate something that you like or you want to do here. I have my text box selected, so let's do our shape first. Under Shape Styles group, we have Shape Fill. 
We can click a desired fill color, pattern, gradient, texture, experiment with all choices here. I think I'm going to choose a gradient. I'm going to select more in order to choose my colors. These are also the options you would get if you right clicked and chose to format your shape. Here under fill, I'm going to choose gradient. You can look at preset colors or choose your own here. There is blue in my graphics, so I'm going to stick with blue. And then I can move on to change the line color or remove it altogether. I'm going to remove it for a more 3D effect, I think. So I'm going to say no border on mine. I think I will add a shadow and close. Now for font color, I'm going to select all of my text move to the Home tab and change my font color here with this box. I'm going to go with a dark blue to complement my color scheme. Okay, as you will note, there needs to be no other key marks showing on the page other than this first one right up here in the corner. You don't need to make any keystrokes on the page outside of that text box that was just inserted. Now that the shape is applied, I need to readjust the position of my clip art so that it has an even margin all the way around. Compare your finished letterhead to the illustration on page 424 and the model document that I have posted in the regular place on my faculty page. Save your document and we'll see what happens in GDP for scoring. See, it is possible to get zero keystroking errors on this document. It is really only scoring the text in the address and URL. Okay, when you are at that point, you are ready to move on to the next document.